I think we're ready to rock and roll. It's awesome. Everybody, welcome to the new media show. My name is Todd Cochran, of course, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Rob Greenlee. Rob, how you doing? I'm doing terrific, Todd. Just uh, it's another Saturday, right? Yeah, no storm today, no running for the hills. <laughs> but we did have a, uh, just as I had kind of thought on the map, there was a, they'd say it was a treetop, but there was trees down. People finally got their power back yesterday. So trees were down and, and all kinds of stuff. I, I remained in power here and had remained power out at the compound as well. So did not, uh, all's good here. So nobody got hurt. So that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, that, that is a good thing. But, uh, yeah, I had a few comments from people who said, you look like you're ready to bolt. And then I actually, <laughs> <laughs> you certainly were. Yeah, I was, I was definitely, uh, uh, you know, had the track shoes on was ready and was ready to bolt. That's, that's for sure. But Hey, Rick and Ron, how you doing? Welcome to the show, Ron. Hope you're doing good out there in the East coast. So, and, and Rick is on the other side of the country, but well, oh, you know, I got to thinking today a little bit about actually last couple of days, and I don't know if you had something you wanted to start off with, Rob, but I just got to thinking about the 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 massive number. Of course, uh, we got a little inside information. Daniel J. Lewis said that growth this month is outpacing even the previous two months. But there is, and if that's true, and we'll have a hundred thousand new podcasters join in the month of June. Um, he said the majority of those are over at that, uh, place that, uh, uh, usually goes deep six with shows. So, you know, what does it really mean here with all these, you know, you literally have tens of thousands of shows that are joining and then quitting that, I, I don't know. I, it, it's not necessarily healthy at all. I'm, I'm just, um, uh, you know, if you can't start a show. If someone starts a show and then doesn't continue the show, it just props up. Um, I'm having all kinds of uh, mobile issues here. It pro it just props up. Oh my god! <laughs> your yeah your mobile challenge today. Yeah, I usually on? turn stuff on. Uh, you know, do not disturb mode, uh, and yeah. I I didn't turn my ringers down. So uh, okay. so I suggest the question then really is. It's just false. It's just, it's just a false narrative. We don't have this real true 100,000 people join this space of 90,000 of them quit. Well, I guess, it's, I mean, it is an interesting question um, whether or not, like, like you say, most of those shows don't survive and pod paid almost immediately, or is there a certain amount of shows that are starting over, over there that are making it uh, long term, I don't. Yeah, I think I. I just know, don't know the answer to that. I do know that um, at Lipson we're growing faster than we really pretty much ever have, and I. I keep hearing from other hosts, same thing happening. So, just because that other you know free platform, that the anchor platform, let's just say what it is, is picking up a lot of shows, doesn't mean that there isn't fast growth in the medium right now on the content side. I think the big question, like you said, is, is, you know, and this is what I was worried about is, is the growth of the content side outpacing the growth of audience. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe that, that actually doesn't happen. Um, maybe we don't get out of balance. Maybe the market maintains that, that growth equilibrium between listeners and content creators. Um, and that's what, you know, that's what keeps things okay about it. Well, I don't know. one thing's for sure is that let's just use a number. Let's say 80% of those new shows quit. And I'm not saying that we don't see that on our side. You know, we, 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 you know, you see a, a, right. a number of shows that open account right. and don't make it. That's, you know, that's in, in variable with anybody. Right. right? Yeah. Um, but I think what you end up with then is people have, because of their ability to auto submit shows to Apple, you now end up with literally 
tens and maybe hundreds of thousands of shows that are cluttering up their directory hours, everyone else's. And I, I'm at a point now where I've been talking with my team and I'm like, let's get rid of all this crap that is one episode or two, you know, something that is not, you know, that hasn't been, you know, it gets in, it starts, it publishes a couple, because we pick stuff up automatically as well. And I just look at our numbers and I'm like, that's just making it harder. And, it, and again, maybe it goes, maybe we are getting to a point where we have a discovery issue because it's really bad. It's a bad look for the podcasting space to have this sea of dead. And Apple's got a sea of dead, a sea of dead. I mean, just a, a massive number of dead shows. De I mean, dead on arrival show. Right. So what do we, what do we tell that? Can we tell the Apple team, you, you guys, is there, does there need to be some new standard where you have to have five episodes in the can before you can be on Apple or how, how do we stop this? This proliferation of cow poop. <laughs> well, I mean, Todd, I, I don't know. You know, I wrestle with this concept of whether or not having more is, is going to somehow impact the discovery of good podcasts. And I, that, that's always the argument here. But I've also, you know, I think you, you and I have all, always had the position that all, all are welcome, right? Yeah, of um, course. So, and I, I think that that's the struggle with the position of saying just because a podcast has you know less than five episodes and it's not creating any new episodes that we should take them down. I think what's going to happen is that the the platforms like Apple Podcasts are are obviously not going to put those podcasts at, at the top of the list. Um, but but they still right. they, they have no way to suppress them in the search results. Well, um, I don't know. I'm just not sure that that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I mean, sure the maybe the content quality isn't that great, and um, but but when you have a show that's named the Rob and Todd Show, and the first episode is, hey, this right. is a test. This is cool. Wow, this is great. This is Rob and Todd. Hey, over and out. And that's it. Well, is that, I mean, how widely is that happening? A lot. Is the, is the bigger question, Yeah, right? it's, it's a lot. So, given that, I think if Apple were to do something like this or any of the listening platforms, I think it needs to be, um, you know, podcasts that maybe have maybe one or two episodes or something like that might be the ones that get filtered out uh quicker um and if there probably needs to be some sort of a time frame at which um those shows kind of get you know removed from the catalog at some point i mean maybe you um maybe after six months or something like that if a piece of content that has one or two episodes in it um isn't getting actively updated Maybe that makes sense, Todd. I don't know how don't. what percentage of that hundred thousand every month is episodes that are one or two episodes, but th I would be curious about that. So if if Daniel can take a look at that, um, that might be helpful and make us, you know, a little bit more informed. Um, because if you go beyond much more than three to five episodes, you could start having an impact on short series yeah. podcast. Right? So I I don't know. I'm just you know there has to be something when you have 80 one month eighty thousand new shows or more or I mean, more we in a month more. i think it was 106 last right. month and, and, and then 80 percent of them are dead immediately doa dead right after one or two episodes is that what you're saying? sometimes no yeah maybe one episode they're dead they're done and it's not even some of them, are, and you can't go through and curate those by hand. It's impossible to listen to all those listings. Tom says, "I don't do. I don't get." Tom Webster says, "I don't get this at all. Don't understand the entire point." Netflix is cluttered with 
shows no longer being made, is there some minimum that you would accept of legit if I do a single show that teaches my whole methodology and don't need to do another? Is that a dead show? Did I pod page? Should my host be the judges? No, I don't think so, Tom. But here's the problem. Th that is not normal for the large majority of of people creating content out there. We're having this, this, it, we're having this massive influx of shows that are being automatically submitted to Apple that maybe the person wasn't ready to submit to Apple, but because the system allows it, it automatically goes in. And maybe it's just an anchor issue. Maybe we just need to tell anchor, you got to stop. They won't. Right. But... Now their system. I mean, as soon as the episode, as soon I mean, as the I first see, episode in know, it, it sends it. You know, and yeah, I mean, I see Tom's point. You know, I, yeah, and and I want this medium to be an all inclusive medium, and if there is something up there, and I think there needs to be this metric that's applied to the the algorithm that says if this show has has uh, one episode and has never been listened to, never been downloaded or some criteria like that at some minimum level. Uh, you know, internally for us, what we do now is if the media is down or the RSS feed is down, we yeah. take the show down. Right. Otherwise, right, right. it sits there in perpetuity. I guess that's the word. So I've got, yeah, yeah, I've got hundreds of thousands of shows from that particular vendor. They have one or two episodes done within one or two days of the account being open and nothing else, nothing else, hundreds of thousands of listings like that. So right. yeah. I mean, do I leave those up? Because sure. Maybe like Tom said, maybe someone did a one, one off tutorial and it was the, you know, it's getting a million downloads. Maybe that, but well, that's how do that's you, that's why Todd was saying if the episode or what was published is very short or something like that, I mean, there needs to be some minimum, right? Very minimum. I mean, if we're going to do anything like this, which I'm not really necessarily in favor of, yeah, because um, I don't want to discourage anybody from getting into the medium. So, you know, but then again, I think each of the listening platforms is going to have to decide for themselves. Oh, of course. Right. About what, what this, you know, I, I wrestled with this concept when I was back with Zoom. Um, you know, and the conclusion I always came back to is that, hey, I'm better off not doing anything on this. So, you Just, know, give you some perspective too, Rob, when we started Tech Podcast as a network, and this is just a network thing, we required that shows have a minimum of seven episodes before they right. could even be considered to be part of the network. Well, iHeartRadio has a requirement uh, when I was working at, at Spreaker that a show have, I believe, five episodes. So in the feed before you can be accepted into their catalog. But it was amazing. Even the shows that made it to seven, how many of those more than 50% and it goes back to my meth, you know, my life survivability number that I've always used on podcasts is that right. even right. of those seven, 50% of those would be dead within literally right. months and we would right. be removing them from the network even though we waited till they got to seven they really never made it to 10 or 12 or 15 and it's pretty remarkable after all these years we've still hovered around a hundred shows that we wanted to be in the network and because right. shows keep you know keep shows keep dying and we and shows that apply we look by right. that methodology to them now as a network i can do that but as a directory, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say most of the directories probably will find other types of criteria to remove shows. Yeah. And, and the one that only, you know, that jumps out of me is either the media links are dead or the RSS feed is yeah. dead. Tom and said, th th those are the base. Yeah. For me, anyway. Tom says there's billion of blog posts, just the same. So what makes a podcast different? Maybe it doesn't. Yeah. Millions of dead YouTube channels too, I guess, right? So maybe this is a lot about nothing, but I don't know. I just, I'm a little bit of a, I'm not OCD, <laughs> but when you have a million, 123,000, what is it today? I don't even know. That's what it was last week. Yeah, I haven't looked. 
Yeah, I haven't I'll looked go, this go, week, but I'll it's go. probably over over what getting close to one point two million, probably yeah, something I'll, like I'll, that. I'll go look on Blueberry and see. And we're always a little higher than anyone else, so you know, fair warning. I'm yeah. at uh, today one million two hundred forty three thousand six hundred fifty five thousand. That's a hundred thousand up since I like the last time I checked. Right, right. You know, yeah, and. <laughs> I've got the ability to, I should do an export and sort on this and, you know, see the, you know, look at the show's last episode dates and all that. Well, you know, so we haven't cleaned house either, you know, so, you know, right, right. but we're about to, we're, well, we're actually going through and making sure we're deduping and some other stuff, but cause there's some dupes in there. Um, I mean, I think a lot of these shows, Todd, are people that are coming in because it's so easy to yeah. make a show on Anchor, right? It's in their mobile app yeah. or whatever, and they can just um, do it and play around with it and see how it works. And, and, it's, and as Rick said, it's kind of a fad right now. You know, podcasting is hot, and people got a lot of, and some people have extra time on their hands. So I don't know. Maybe I'm, my, my approach is wrong here. But, and we, you know, as you said, we don't want to, but I just, oh. You know, I just don't want to set some sort of an arbitrary bar for people to reach to get to, to try, you know. Well, then maybe, and again, you know, we know a lot of people listen to the show. You know, what do you do to clean the mess up? And it may be what it is, is you just, we, we go back to, you know, if it's, there's no feed and there's no RSS feed, maybe that's the, the kicker. And that's when it goes down. But when you have a free service and stuff is not cleaned up after the, customer cancels because there's no canceling when it's free right so those rules right. don't apply so in the end you're going to end up with 750,000 acre shows and <laughs> well you know i mean it is a, a fascinating point that i hadn't really thought of Todd. is it is it i think when when a paid service operates in this medium it i think it keeps a podcaster kind of you know more honest about the situation right I guess is might be one way of looking at it, right? Or they're paying for something when they're serious about the thing, right? Well, and yeah, then I mean, again, if they're not paying, then they're not as serious about it, well, then, and they're not as responsible for it either, right? But then again, I've got sixty-five, seventy, seventy-five thousand people using PowerPress for free. It has a free they're putting it on their WordPress site, and they may not they're self-hosting, and they're self-hosting, and unless they cancel right. their their hosting site, then that show has technically stayed online because some people self-host, some people use a hosting provider. That's why we use the rule. If the media is gone, right. it's, a, it's a pretty good sign that that show is no longer on the air. Yeah. And you're probably safe to take that listing down. If the feed right. goes down, well, that's, you know, it's another good sign, but. Well, one other criteria here too is, um, does a show have cover art? You know, that was a big problem that I, I saw, I've seen for many years. I, though I think it's not as big of an issue as it used to be. Um, I believe, uh, it just, you know, if a show doesn't have cover art, doesn't have a description, uh, has a couple of episodes, you know, you know, is that another way of looking at it? Yeah, it could, but it gets complicated. So if we don't, if a person doesn't have album art, we give them some default, you know, album art that's in their account that, you know, we yeah, just. I had a problem in, when I was working on Zoom, just a sea of default album art yeah. on a page, right? And, and it looks horrible for the listening platform. Yeah. I, I Tom, think that's more impactful. Tom says, is, um, is the mess based on supply though, or a, on a failure of search meta? data rank authority and podcast discovery well i don't think there's very there's very few platforms actually do any ranking there you know apple does obviously does their thing right and everything else just kind of falls into search but just go to apple and do some searches you know just do some random searches and it to me it's pretty mind-boggling and the number of shows that have the exact, exact same name there's just, you know, it's just a huge, a huge list of shows. So maybe, maybe it's not. And again, if, if I contend to what I've said for years that most podcasts 
subscriptions or people that are finding podcasts are through word of mouth right. and not necessarily through search engines. Well, and, and Todd, or not Todd, but Tom raises the point too, that it, maybe they just get removed from search, but uh, I would think also, you know, that may create problems too, because if, uh, if the podcaster himself comes in and searches for his, his dead podcast or his pod faded podcast, he's still going to want to see it in the search results. Yeah. And if he doesn't, then he's going to complain. Well, you know, let's, let's go over to, uh, I'll take, I'll give you one example. And it's, it's, it's my, it's, you know, it's a show that my mom and I did years ago. And, uh, the, the feed's still up. The, uh, the listing is still there. So let me go ahead and flip the screen. Yeah. Uh, where am I at here? I mean, it, so. You know, there's a show that last episode was 2009, you know, yeah. 11 years ago. So it's still online and on, on Apple podcasts because the feed in the media is still there. So yeah. it, it was yeah, I've that got a show that's in Apple podcasts right, right now that has, uh, probably, you know, 80 episodes from 2005. Right. So, I mean, it, and it's all the links are active, the, everything works. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's shows that have archives that are in here too, that are valid shows. Um, I, you know, it, it's just such a hard question that raises so many issues. You know, I mean, it's the old saying that, you know, um, I mean, I mean, everybody's baby looks pretty to them. <laughs> That's right. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, it can be ugly to everyone else, but to them, it's it's what they put their efforts into. But, but even here's a, an iHeartRadio. It's on iHeartRadio. It got picked up. We never submitted it. Right. You know, so, you know, is it is it because, you know, there it is. There's a, well, the website's not, you know, here's, you know, the website's still online. Haven't touched that site in years. So is it valuable content? I, well, I still think it's valuable content. Does anybody ever find it? Who knows, you know, but, right. but I guess I'm not so worried. I, I don't know. I'm just, maybe what it boils down to is I'm pissed off that there's 80,000 dead shows being added every month. Well, I think it's the, it's, it's the effect of free platform, right? I mean, it's, it's added an element here that, um, hasn't really been much of a much of a presence in the podcasting space for many years um and it's i would say that it's i don't i mean it, is this really a problem i know i talk to podcasters and they can they can be a little bit you know some of them can be a little angry at the the old-time podcasters or podcasts have been around for a long time you know hammering on the free platforms um because i mean a lot of people just don't want to pay to do this they, they just want to do it right yeah. Um, and if they would choose to stop doing it, then there's, there's no commitment. There's no responsibility that they have to, to do anything. Right. Well, I mean, no, I don't pay, miss paying for something requires a certain level of responsibility I, on the part of the podcast. I, I don't, their model is what their model is. It's right. not hurting my business. I'm getting a lot of folks from them that kind of graduate and you guys do too. So it is what it is. Right. And right. I guess I just, I think if it's a place to come in and kick the tire, if the automated, it would be really what it would be solved if Apple just didn't allow the auto submission. And I think that would, that would clean it up almost immediately, but that's not their model. So I can't well, automate, I can't automatically. It's been a sore spot with all of us. Uh, yeah, because, I can't, I can't you know, automatically submit to Apple. Right. Why is it okay for Anchor to do it to Apple when none of the other podcast hosts can can do that? Not that we'd even want to, really, if you no. think about it. Um, but all of us have been after Apple, and I, you know, I know Apple's listening to this, and we've had conversations. Uh, we would all love to have a way to to submit to Apple through our platform, especially if the podcaster could use their own credentials, like we all think that's what right. it should be. All right, and and that gives that podcaster access to their their Apple metrics and all that stuff that um, 
that many podcasters, you know, I think on Anchor don't even know exist. Oh, so, yeah, it's, it's uh, and I, that's a conversation that comes up quite a bit when I'm like, okay, we need, you know, we're transitioning someone off their platform, you know, we, we can move them without getting into their Apple account, obviously, but then I'm like, okay, you need to go over and I claim your Apple account and set a t- ticket to get in there to get access. And they're like, what, what do you mean? Yeah. They don't even know. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe the same things with Google and Spotify too. I don't know, but, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I just, it, it just, I got to thinking about it and it's, so maybe it's not a problem, but I'm just, I mean, you know, I'm getting, and what it really boils down to, I'm getting a little OCD on my own directory. <laughs> and I'm looking at these numbers grow and I'm like, let's get some of that. Because my database is getting big. <laughs> okay, I get it now. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's not necessarily <laughs> all of it, but I've got every episode t- since 2005 of every podcast that's ever been created well, in my database. I mean, for- yeah, I mean, but for most of those shows, Todd, there's not very much metadata. <laughs> well, some that, well, we actually had to cut the metadata we were collecting because it really got, I mean, like it became a, it could become a four to five digit bill every month. Right, right. Database wise. So we actually started parsing down some of the stuff that we were storing because it just got, and Angelo wants to potentially go even further, only what's active in the, in the feed. He, he's kind of in the mode right now, like, do we really need to have, uh, you know, a billion episodes in our database? And <laughs> do we really? Need do we money? really need? And of course, yes. me, I'm the data junkie. I'm like, yes, we do. Right. Um, hmm. But there has to be a, you know, at some point that becomes a very expensive operation. <laughs> right. For you know, just for, to satisfy Todd's you know, running queries. Yeah. Yeah. And that, the, the bigger that database gets, right. And the more active it is, it, it does cost more money to maintain that and back up and everything else. And right. think about that. We got a million, 243,000. I have, and I have every episode they've ever created in that database. So right. that's not right. a small amount of information. Oh, it's not. <laughs> And matter of fact, it takes like, at the end of the month, we do some, I don't know, he does something. It takes like a day for that data to be offloaded or something into a permanent tape. I I don't understand what it is. It's a huge deal every month. It's done automatically, but. Yeah. Hey, Todd, did you see the article in um, podcast movement about uh, Pinterest for podcasting? I think so. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I I hadn't really uh, spent much time thinking about Pinterest as a as a podcast listening destination, but um, I don't I even guess, know anybody on Pinterest. Yeah, well, it's a it's a visual, mostly a visual. Me- I mean, I would put it on par with uh, the, the Instagram platform, right? Yeah, uh, being being very visual and and um, people creating artwork and uploading it up there or crafts or all sorts of stuff. And it, oh, it does do. tend to be rather niche, um, kind of like podcasting. So, yeah. you know, you could, you could see that there may be some crossover there. I, I think it's very, very specific to certain types of genres of content. Um, but, uh, it's certainly, you know, I think the, the platform, if you really look at how it works, it has like these vertical, file experiences right on the page that you could envision as an episode of a podcast right yeah so i mean it is an interesting kind of mm, area that i'm not sure that the podcasting medium is really uh focused on at least i I know from the hosting platforms i know you know i talked to the lipson team about it and they were saying (laughs) you know it they're a little bit on the fence right about whether or not pinterest is really a a place that could see, you know, podcast, dis- you know, discovery and consumption or not, because it is such a visual medium, kind of like um, it, the Instagram platform. 
Right. Well, well, it turns out I did have an account on there, but I haven't been on there in so long. It made me update my my settings. Mm-hmm. So it asked me what I like: uh, hunting, dream vacations, menswear, home office recipes. So it does show me. It's right. it's mostly photography stuff. Fashion, photography, arts, crafts. Um, but I mean, a lot of those genres are popular podcasts yeah. too, right? So I guess so, a way to promote your, so I'm, I, again, I haven't been on here in years and I'm flipping through fast. So let me go and let's pick this one here. This is for how to tie a knot. And I, and I guess. I mean, it's a little bit, you know, it's a hybrid between like, you know, YouTube experiences, uh, with more visual, right? It's, it's a little bit more, I'm going to say versatile than the Instagram platform. Uh, There's I, a lot of advertising on here. Yeah, I just don't know if, you know, like the headliner platform have have considered creating a, you know, a capability to publish to Pinterest versus just Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, right? Rob, there's some shirts for you. I think you there should. There you go. Hey, I think you should. Awesome. I think you should order the purple one. I, I a couple of those. I, <laughs> I take the one on the left too. The one with the red, the red, that's, red and, and green that's, colors. That's, that's yeah, got right. that's got a whole seventies feel to me. So it, it, it does. <laughs> well, I'm a kid of the seventies. <laughs> so you know, I've, I'm be honest with you, I haven't been over here in in years. So for me, it's like, well, you know, it, of course, the thing that I clicked on led me right to some store. So right. Well, I yeah, guess that's you could, cool link your website up with that your podcast website yeah and of course stuff that in here's something that's interesting so let me show you this one so that oh so oh let me go back so on this page there is a someone that's basically showing how to do home stuff you know right and um, like like a yeah carpet yeah or, whatever and yeah. this guy's i'm sure they're selling something so let's go and see what it is yep they're trying to sell this uh universal multilateral measuring and locator so you can get one of those for 20 suck me right in i clicked right on it 29.95 right what right. if I, I hey it looks pretty cool but would i ever would i would ever use it probably not um <laughs> so well, Todd, yeah. it says on the uh, podcast movement uh, newsletter page that in uh, first quarter of 2020, Pinterest had 367 million monthly active users worldwide. That's huge. So what are they suggesting you post? Pictures? A video? What are they? What's the promotion strategy on Pinterest? Uh, let's see here. What do they say here? Um, Upload a graphic um, of your website or of your podcast artwork. Um, post, you know, you can post your episodes in there. Um, link to your your website uh, where, where you have your full episode. I I don't believe Pinterest enables you to upload like a a headliner type of mm-hmm. consumption experience. Um, but you know, it's definitely a topic that I'll talk to. Um, the headliner folks about see what they they think about it but i mean it seems fairly straightforward on what you would do so um, i i've had an account since well i haven't been on here since 2012 you can tell by the profile picture <laughs> and yeah. i've got 38 followers i'm following 10 people and right. uh, looks like i came up with some idea to do some promotion but there is no i posted nothing to this right. so and I, I think it does lean pretty heavily towards uh, female um, account holders as well as female visitors. Um, but I think uh, I've, I, I've kind of shied away from it a little bit too uh, because I didn't feel like I was welcome over there necessarily. Uh, I mean, a, a guy. So, but maybe that's incorrect. Maybe I, you know, maybe it is a place for. For everyone, it's got 367 million people on it. So I search for podcast, and here's how they look. Right. So someone's selling something, the podcast launch kit. 
how to plan a podcast, how to start a money-making podcast, how to create your own website. That was by Wix. So it looks to me like it's lots of tutorials. Audacity right. Basics. So let's see where that goes. Okay, so you can't l listen. Yeah, that's interesting. I guess it's a subscribing to some sort of a tutorial of some sort, right? Or a book or, or Yeah, like so that. how do you find, you know, oh, they've got a link up there to the website. So if I go to the website and it it's really SEO'd out really well what that person did. How to prepare for a podcast interview and then their website is loading slow as sin. How to prepare for a podcast interview. So you, you can get to the page, but there's no, this is what's funny. It's, it's an article about how to prepare a podcast interview, but there's no player on the page. There's, I guess there isn't, this is just a blog post. Yeah, it's, it's not on Pinterest. So I, you know, no, the, what, this goes I to, a, what, this goes to someone else, believed, this goes to it? someone else's website, Rob. Right, so, right. I mean, all, all Pinterest is, is just kind of like a jumping off point. Yeah. Right? It's a way to promote and then drive people to, uh, to an external content source. So right. they've got pictures for podcast studio. They've got podcast studio design. They've got podcast. A lot of this is really commercial driven. A lot mm -hmm. of the podcast searches are so, well, you know, maybe this is where people are looking for podcasts for women. Yeah, these are all linked to a lot of articles. So this is what they're doing. They're taking people off, off site right there's for Wix promoted by. So that's a, that's a commercial for Wix. All right. Well, so there, some people had success with it. Hey, you know what? In the end, if it's getting you traction, getting you listeners. Right. And it may cater to a certain segment. Um, in the podcasting space more than others, right? Yeah. Certain types of content. Um, but I thought it was interesting, you know, it's been a long time since I've had it really, or had seen anyone in the podcasting space talk about Pinterest. So, um, well, anyway, yeah. interesting. There was something I was going to talk about before you started talking about that. I can't remember what it was. It'll come back to me. Oh Yeah. Always does. We did get picked up on the last uh, show. Last talk. I guess everyone was surprised. Uh, at least Cridlin seemed to be surprised about that five percent issue so on on the watch. Right? On the watch. I haven't heard any anybody scream at me yet over that article. So, well, because I think it's right. Oh, it is right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to argue about it. Too and much. people are going to be people are going to be mad when their numbers go down on various platforms. So. Yeah. I mean, I think it's great what Apple's doing. I mean, it's a, it's definitely a, 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 you know, a feature that I think is good for the listener. We but, just need to, as delivery platforms, we just need to realize and embrace what the behavior is, so we get accurate numbers. Well, it's just like an autoplay on a web page. It's kind of the same thing, you know, when when someone's autoplaying an audio file, it's the right. same bad behavior. That uh, you know can't continue to be supported, right? So, well, as as time goes on here, the the, the whole issue with podcast conferences and events continues oh, to get more. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to talk about. More convoluted. Um, she she podcast pulled the plug. Yep. Well, until twenty twenty one. Um. Yeah. It's it's really too bad, and I I'm not at liberty to say, but there's a bigger there was an ongoing well. They well they had to cancel, postpone. Po well, postpone. Right, probably a better word to describe it. Yep, because there was a huge, or there is an active, um, high 
growth rate of coronavirus cases in uh, well, in in Phoenix right it's now. It's not exactly 100% true. They're testing a lot more and their hospitalizations are not completely spiking, so it's a little mixed message at this point. Is but it, yeah, but, it, but they still okay. have an increased number regardless. Right, 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 right. So and it raises questions about podcast movement. So I I did talk talk to to Dan Franks yesterday and he's still planning on doing what he's going to do. So there isn't any change from him that I'm, I'm feeling. So they're they're also on track. They're also holding their event in Texas and Texas is Texas operates a little different than a lot of part, a large part of the country. Right. So, you know, Texas didn't, they shut down a little bit, but they never completely shut down right. to begin with. So right. we'll see so. as, we'll see as the summer goes on, but you know, there's many reasons because, you know, here's the problem that these event coordinators are up against. They're on cancel windows. They're on, there's a whole bunch of reasons that they have to, cons- not just the numbers of the infections. It's, you know, they have it's, to, well, it's their contract and they have to speculate what's going to be, you know, right. this is June, July, August, September. They got to speculate what it's going to be in 90 days. And they, and they, and they're, and I, and I don't blame them for having to make the call and they be New York's canceled. They, you know, that probably yeah, doesn't come the, as a surprise. And that, that event is, in, I believe in October, November, yeah. or something like that. Right. Yeah, it's later. So, and. Yeah, in that same kind of time frame, though. So the number uh, the number of events for us to get together this year are rapidly, rapidly declining. Yeah, I would almost for say that if the podcast movement goes on, it will be the only event of the year. Yeah, that's my prediction. But as my CFO says, we're saving a hell of a lot of money on travel right now. <laughs> Well, Dan, Dan did say that he was w- willing to come on the show to talk about podcast movement probably in sometime in July. Okay. That's what he told me. All right. So, That'll work. Yeah. So about what's going on there and, and how, how things might be different. Um, you know, I had a lot of questions for him too, and he doesn't necessarily have a lot of answers to things other than they're, they're just continuing to march forward with the assumption that things are going to happen. So, yeah. And I think, too, based on everything I'm seeing, people are, uh, well, let's just be frank. Um, my, in my community, um, even though tomorrow or Monday is our official out of quarantine stay at home order, because that ends for us yep. on the 12th, yep. traffic and businesses, minus being a sit down, because we can't sit down in restaurants yet in Michigan. Um, Everything's pretty much back to normal. Mm-hmm. And I see maybe one in 10 people wearing a mask. And I'm hearing even in states that have had like, you know, social media justice warriors and people that are pretty brutal on calling people out. I'm hearing the same thing, like one in 10, two in 10 wearing a mask in many big cities across the country. I think that people have just said, I, I think they resigned themselves to the fact that this thing is here and they're going to go about their business and people, and they basically, I think what it boils down, people have basically said, if you're old and have pre-existing conditions, you're on your own and what? that's the way it appears, you know, so. We're moving on and we're going to take our losses take and take our risk and, and be on with it. But, um, I mean, because it is, I mean, I think the approach that the country is taking generally is that we've accepted the fact that this virus is going to, it's going to make its way through the population and that's how we're going to come out of this on the other side. Right. Just like any other flu. Um, that's, that's how it feels anyway. And as we big as accepted the fact that it's going to do that. And as big as the tragedy was that surrounded all the protests that went down, 
you know, I think people basically said, okay, uh, you know, the, the protest that happened with mass gathering. So I, I think but, that pushed it over the edge. I think that basically pushed people into saying, no. forget it, let's go. And, um, I'm still being cautious. Yeah, I am too. You know, I'm right. 56 and you know, so I, I haven't really made that many, that much changes to what I do compared to when things were locked down. I mean, I, I don't really have to, right, so right. why would I take those risks at this point? Um, I, I did notice in pod news uh, that, uh, James said that there's some sort of big news coming up on Monday. Um, a podcast app that has eight times um, bigger usage than we all realized or something like that. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure what he's eight, referring eight to. Eight times of uh, one tenth of 1% or. Right. Uh, yeah. Tom says, I can't leave Massachusetts and come back without a 14 day self quarantine. I'm not going anywhere. How do they enforce that, Tom? They can't enforce that. Hawaii so is enforcing it. If you s- step off an airplane, Hawaii is enforcing it. Hawaii is sending people home. Hawaii, but Hawaii is a little bit different. It's a you can't drive into Hawaii, right? That's true. You have to so fly in. E- and because I've got a mission driver's or by license, boat, yeah, or by boat. And when there's no boats going in, they're banned. So if I fly into Honolulu now because I don't longer have a Honolulu address, I basically have to go to my house and stay in my room away from anybody for 14 days <laughs> can you imagine sure you're, you're how's that, that how's that possible so i'm just not <laughs> going home right you know yeah. so but i you know i so sometime in july supposedly they're gonna loosen the loosen it up a little bit but there's over uh it's only 600 some cases so far in honolulu And I bet you, Tom, what's happening in Massachusetts, you got people that are coming and going and they don't care about this imposed quarantine. How can you stop it? There's, they haven't put roadblocks up on the highway. It's voluntary, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, I haven't heard on that. But, you know, it's, it, it's, in an, it, it's the same point too, Rob. We opened our office back up on uh, last week, Monday, and made it voluntary. And we had restrictions on the number of people that could be in the office. And uh, no, only one person used the office for one day last week. So, um, and it was because there was something going on at their house. They had some plumbing job going on or something and didn't want to hear the plumber banging around or something. Right. Right. <laughs> so people don't want to go back to their office space. And we're not forcing anybody to go back. Yeah. Yeah. So these podcasting events, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd like to at least go to one this next year. <laughs> well, I've said podcast movements on, I'll, I'll be there, right. you know, I'll go. So right. the question is how many is going to go? How many people are actually show up? I think 2021, there's definitely a lot of talk about, um, some different things going on with this too. I mean, I mean, I think a lot of people would like to think that we're, we're just going to go back to normal at some point and everything's going to be hunky dory again, just like it was before. And I'm a little skeptical of that. If, um, if they get, if they get a vaccine, I think it'll come back pretty quick being normal, but people, I don't know. But there's a lot of people that aren't wanting to take the vaccine. Well, right? that's their problem then. I'm not an anti-vaxxer, so, right. well, I was in the Navy for, my God, I was in the Navy for 25 years. I got every shot known to man, including anthrax <laughs> shots, and that was the one that scared the hell out of me the most. Right, yeah. I had no choice. I had to sit there and watch the needle go on my arm and get, you know, anthrax spores be put in me or whatever that they use for vaccine for anthrax. Oh. Not wow. just once, five times. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Todd, Todd, the guinea pig on that one. Hey, you, when you when you join the Navy, they just line you up and shoot you the gun. You know, if you had a, if you didn't have your vaccinations before, you got them all at once. Oh. <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm. But who knows? Maybe I'm 
total whack job because of it. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that raises a whole other question. I'm yeah, just, it does. Just kidding, <laughs> but you know, I understand people's concerns about vaccines, but yeah, I, I'm not going to get on that bandwagon. Right. Right. And if they, if they, you know, and it's, it's their risk then, not mine. Yeah, and Tom Webster raises a very good point too. What's happening around podcasting event um, outside of the U.S. Right. too? So that's the that that's the next thing. You know, Canada and Europe, and there's events popping up uh, in Asia and all sorts of places. Australia. Well, you, you, you want to go to any of those countries? You better have about thirty days. Because again, I think the United States still is making people self quarantine for 14 days when they come back. There's no app for that. Right. It's voluntary. But then when you go into some countries, the policy is you get your swab at the airport and then you go to a, a, a government sponsored hotel and you stay there for however long it takes to get the test back. And then you're, you're tracked. So going well, international well, is going to be those, those tests won't take that long. Right. Well, there's very few countries that have rapid testing like here where you can get a, 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 a uh, in Hong Kong, people are waiting eight hours for their test as they get off inter and they have them in big, big rooms, like big hangars and they have chairs set up and you sit there with your luggage for eight hours waiting for your results to come back. So that's interesting. But if you have to quarantine for two or three, so that means you have to leave two or three days early arrive if this is the policy of the country and you have to go through two or three days of testing and sit in a hotel room until you're given the all clear and right. then do your thing and then come back to the United States and probably go through the whole process. Well, I don't think they're testing in the United States. They're just basically taking your temperature maybe and saying, okay, we'll quarantine for 14 days. Right. Yeah. But. So we'll see. Again, it all depends on vaccines, and I don't know. Luckily, the promote production of podcasts have not slowed down because of oh, COVID nineteen. Oh. Right, and there's a there's a continuous flow of as we've seen in you know just in what we see in pod news. There's this continuous flow of of investment in podcasting. Was it the podcast network got one point four million in seed funding? Um, there's a a, a new company called Pod Beans. Mm -hmm. um, Black Hole is also doing some stuff. Uh, it's like a Soundflower update kind of thing. Um, Was it Pod Bible? Uh, there's always just a bunch of stuff happening. Yep. So I don't know if I talked about it on the last show. Did I talk about the AWS Marketplace stuff on the last show? I think I already talked about it here, didn't I? I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, I think I did. Right, we basically <gasps> have our pro hosting services now available right. via w AWS Marketplace. Right. Yeah, right. It's been an interesting response to that. But I think the most interesting response is you have an API. Like, yeah, we had an API. I've had an API for years. <laughs> right. So, yeah, lots of stuff going on. Uh, people still getting money. Yeah. I got queried the other day to do a, um, they, <clears throat> some company called me, some research company, and they wanted to, uh, me to do, uh, get paid to provide publicly known information based upon the podcasting space. And, uh, yeah, the interview went good. And she said, we're going to send you the form over. And when she sent the form over to me, there was in the third step, there was a list of, restrictions that was i read through this thing i'm like i can't do my job if i agree to this <laughs> and i sent the lady back and i said i i'm good with page one and two but your terms on page three sorry i i can't agree to that and uh, so i guess i'm not going to be a uh a consultant for someone ah uh, there you go <laughs> <clears throat> so another um uh, live virtual podcasting conference is happening later today. Today? Uh, yeah. Uh, Joe Pardo. Oh, he's having another I one. It, I think it, 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 did it already start? Let's see. Probably. He's been doing those short uh, eight hour ones. Yeah. 
Yeah, it actually started at 9 a.m. Eastern today. Um, it, it's at the independentpodcastconference.com. I'm going to be doing a session at uh, 430 Eastern. So what's the topic? So, um, my topic? Yeah. Well, the whole conference is um, basically starting up as a podcast. Oh. This He's is been, for, for beginners. He's been doing, I think this is the third one. He's been doing, he did a, a two-day one, and he did a one-day one, and I think this is another one-day event. So he's been, yeah, and, um, my session is, is basically about how to become a compelling host and a co-host and those type of relationships. Mm. Kind of like what we have here, Todd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But I want to talk a lot about you, Todd, on this. Oh, good. <laughs> and yeah, I'll make sure my ears are ringing in around the time that you're, uh, that you're doing that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So some people are oh, having a little trouble. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the topic is interesting from the perspective of um, some people are are more inclined to be like solo casters, mm -hmm. and other people are more inclined to be like uh, hosts and have a co-host. So, um, you know, you've actually spent most of your podcasting. I think we maybe we talked about this a bit last week, but yeah, um, you know, you tend to want to be a solo cast. Yeah. I think, yeah. And Did doing this show with me and stuff has you know opened your your spectrum's a little bit on the other side too. Yeah, I couldn't right. imagine having done a, uh, you know, when I was started out, I, can, I just can't even imagine having him had to have had a co host. Because number one, you can't rely on co hosts. You, you've got a vested interest in doing yeah. this show together. You know, we both have a vested interest in doing it. And then the same thing with my podcast insider. Well, that's my team. So my team has a vested interest to do that as well because they get told to do it, you know? So, um, but I, it's yeah, but very I did hard the to speak your live show for many years and, you know, with a volunteer co-host wow. really, yeah. I mean, it was, and the radio show that I did for many years too, I, I had up to, I had up to three co-hosts on my show at various times. So oh, it's hard to juggle, you know, it is, it is. And you're dealing with a lot of complex kind of relationship issues too with the, with yeah. the show and, and who's responsible for what. And, and if a person's not getting paid, are they, you know, or, you know, those type of issues, um, cause conflict and sometimes, you know, co-hosts and hosts break up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've had a few of those come across our desk recently. Right. Hey, hey so yeah. switching topics here. Yeah. I've heard some people have had some challenges with the latest upgrade to the Roadcaster Pro. The really? Two, I, heard, I hadn't heard that. So yeah. what's going on with that? Well, people are having some challenges with levels. Stuff has moved around quite a bit. Stuff has changed. The mixed minus features, uh, even it affected Mike and I during the recording of uh, it's just a little small thing. So here's my advice. If you have not yet upgraded to 2.1, make sure you got a few days in between updating it and doing your show so that you've got some time to play with it. Don't do an update two hours before you record your next most important interview you might end up very, very, very frustrated. So make sure that you, when you do upgrade to 2.1, you've got a couple of days to, to mess around with it and, to, and make sure you test because this is a big, big, big update uh, as compared to other ones. And uh, they've, they're, they're stuffing a lot into this thing at this point. But yeah, primarily levels, listing levels, matching that type of stuff where people are having trouble. And I think some of it's just because stuff is buried. Yeah. So Rob, what would happen over at Libsyn if you guys had $4 million a month to spend? Or um, on like whatever we want. Yeah. To spend on? Staff, everything, $4 million a month. Hmm, probably staff. Staff. Luminaries, yeah, help, bur help. Luminaries burn in $4 million a month. Is oh, that burning. 
on a burning. That's the burn, burn rate. Right. That's burn the burn rate. rate. That's a yeah. that's an incredibly big number. There is well, a, well, what's important is the revenue number on the other side of that, right? Well, we I know mean, it's only half a million, but yeah. Well, there you go. That that's the real burn rate. Right? Yeah, three point five. But still, holy smokes! Yeah, that's that's an incredible number. There's an interview with an anonymous insider, and I, I I kind of chuckled just just a little bit on this because and it, it probably you know lends to things that we talk about them and others do. Um, it basically says that uh, come on, I don't want to see your pop up. It says that the um, the community is ex- exceptionally tough on Luminary. <laughs> unfairly, unfairly tough. So, I don't know. I think, but they said what, one of the questions that was asked by the interviewer, what do you think Luminary's biggest challenges are right now? And here is the response. They need a hit show in order to legitimate legitimize their business and make it viable long-term. And by a hit show, I mean a juggernaut, a serial, a slow burn, a Joe Rogan, nothing medium sized will do anything else. Makes me feel like I can skip it and be fine. Podcasts are free. So they need to find a reason to make people to pay them. And so far if they're making a strong enough argument. They're also, they're also not helped by the fact that we have, 100 streaming services and so people have been trained to care less about all content they can't consume it's true what's yeah. going on? my apple you, you hear music in the background no i have whatever prompted my apple tub or whatever it's called that music player just randomly uh-huh. started playing music so, all right. So, hey Siri, stop. <laughs> Thought I couldn't hear it. So I don't. You know. couldn't hear it. No. It just started playing. What What did I read in this thing that caused that thing to kick? I have no idea. That's interesting. It is. These these smart home devices, ladies and gentlemen, are listening. Well, well I. I have that happen on a regular basis with the, um, the, 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 the Amazon speaker as well. Yeah, it, it, it'll too. just all of a sudden start talking to you. I had a, had a YouTube, uh, not a YouTube, um, yeah, some Facebook video kicked it the other day. Some, someone was doing something live and, uh, <clears throat> they actually said A-L-E-X-A and play next song. And my Amazon device did. <laughs> That's just, I'm like, you got to be kidding, you know? So, but anyway, going back to this, um, do you think these challenges can be overcome? And this respondee said, Luminary is not the cool kid on the block, which sucks. I think that perception is unfair. Everyone in the industry publicly drags Luminary, but privately they all want to work with them and sell them shows. I don't think so. So perhaps they'll make it work. I think someone will be able to make this business model work. Well, you just don't hear from no. Luminary at all in the medium. They're, they're not in the news. They, they're, it just, they're like barely a blip on the radar, which doesn't, doesn't help them. Yeah. So why <laughs> Rick is, um, my mom and Rick are saying that I just caused, uh, their iPhones to respond. <laughs> you probably <laughs> did, Todd. <laughs> well, maybe I stopped people from actually playing this show if they were listening. Right. Yeah, well, you probably, we just stopped 90% of the people living listening on to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, but that's why you got to be careful what you say, you know. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Oh. But. But with a four million dollar burn, you think they could at least afford to buy some publicity? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but they say they need a big show. It's hard. No. It's hard. They they're not in the content making business. 
they're in the they're in the signing a contract business with big shows. So I just don't know why they need a three and a half or four million dollar burn uh, rate. burn burn rate on staff for they, what they're doing. They right? must have a huge staff. Yeah. Well, but, let's see. It really doesn't take that much to get four yeah. million burn. Forty employees, I mean, probably. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I'm definitely in favor of them being successful. I want them to be successful. I just, I'm just dubious of the approach that they've taken in the medium and whether or not it's going to work. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, when was the last time that any of us talked to Luminary? Some event, it may be long, LA. Long time ago. Yeah. And so I don't know yeah. if it's the. You know, the Chinese own, so is that the, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand that DNA over there at all. Right. I mean, there's some really big uh, new podcast listening platforms coming that people in the space haven't heard about yet. Right. I mean, there's a lot of stuff brewing in the next six months. And yeah, yeah some big ones. And maybe you're scratching your head going, I thought we got them all. Well, nope, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and who might be, yeah. who might that be, Rob? Hmm. I probably shouldn't say, Todd. I know I can't say. Right. <laughs> 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 but it, nonetheless, it, it, it's very good news for the podcast. Um, and there's other ones out there that are, um, that are bubbling up too, that, you know, not all of us have gotten on board with that are coming too. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting what's happening. You know, it's outside of the U S too, not just in the U S I um, think, but, but certainly in the U S is it, you know, when it happens, they'll go, you know, it'll oh. be like a light bulb went off in their heads going, yeah. Right. That makes sense. So I think so. too, what you end up having then is more options for your content to be heard somewhere, which is good. And, yeah. um, and I think Pandora is probably picking up the pace. So if you, you know, yeah. if you've been waiting they're they're picking up the pace here. So, well, soon. Well, they're, they're still wrestling with their model a little bit. Yeah. I think they're close to resolving that. Yeah. So we'll keep our fingers crossed here on that, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's the combination between Pandora and um the the satellite network that they're affiliated with too. Maybe we should try so. to get Lindsay back on the show. Yeah. No, well, we could and certainly I mean I mean he has a lot of opinions on um this topic and we I don't, have have we talked about this, but I can't remember uh, podcast insurance. I think maybe we did mention a couple episodes ago. Yeah, but but he he would be a good guy to come on and talk about podcast insurance and why that might be important in the medium as you look forward. Um, plus, also the podcast academy, the uh, the launching webinars. There's two of them coming up on June 18th that I'm I'm going to be hosting with the executive director of the podcast academy coming up on June 18th. You have uh, your uh, presentation ready. It's going to be an open Q and A. Oh, so we're going to take questions from the audience. Uh, I mean, I'm going to share kind of the basics of the organization um, as best I can, but mainly it's just to create a you know a two way communication, learn uh, from people that want to join us to ask questions and to contribute ideas and those kind of things. That's kind of the the phase that I'm at with it is hearing you know what additional benefits can the organization bring that are there, there, there's a lot of discussion right now about creating a you know a mentorship program inside the organization to match uh you know some successful podcasters up with those that are getting started um so you know there's a lot of things like this that are starting to bubble up and um and there's been a renewed interest at least on on my side that i'm putting into the organization about having this organization be involved in some you know some technical standards or standards 
discussions on how we can bring the industry together. Son. Measurement's one thing, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Right, right. So and if this organization can be that global organization that can foster those type of group discussions, then that's, that's something that I, I'm going to encourage the Academy to do. It's not something that we've adopted as an approach, but it is a priority to me. Well, I think um, you ought to give me the link to your webinar sign up so I can share it in the show notes today. That way we can, because that's only five days away. So that's what, Wednesday of next week or Thursday? Next yeah, Thursday. I, yeah, Thursday yeah, in, the 18th. Uh, I, you, you can get to it by going to just the thepodcastacademy.com. Um, and it's on the, uh, the webinars and online events link at the upper part of the page. So. Well, otherwise, we've got a few people in the audience today. Yeah, and that's good. Does anybody want to dial in and say hello? We're, I think I've got Skype fired up. If you guys want to call in, we've got about 15 minutes left here. So if anybody wants to dial in, we'll leave that in up for the time being. Yeah. And get ready to, because uh, I'm kind of out of stuff. You know, doing this twice a week, we don't have as a big of a pile of uh, of content. We can, you know, we can talk about a lot of stuff, you know, and, you know, growth of one show. There's, you know, there's a lot of topics we can cover. Right. But it's uh, sometimes well, I feel, sometimes I feel like I'm a broken record going over stuff, though. Well, and Todd, one, there, there's a couple topics that we could talk about, too. And one is the, you know, your podcast awards and about just podcast awards in general. And then also um, the Hall of Fame. Yeah, so the Podcast Awards nominations open on July 1st. Uh, registration's going decently. It'll be a rush like the last week uh, before, and I've been promoting it pretty heavy on social and made all the Facebook right. announcements I could. But if you're not registered for the Podcast Awards, uh, $25 to register. Every right. penny that is brought in goes back into buying trophies and keeping the site up and making improvements. It's not a moneymaker for me. No $250 registration fee like some award systems are. Although I wish I would have picked 250 I actually might have been able to, of course, then I'd have been the, the scourge of the podcasting community for being an asshole. But um, <laughs> so it's only. It's, it's a no win situation, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> so 25 is the is the registration fee. And, um, but again, we, and we've got some opportunity for people that want to be podcast sponsors too. Believe it or not. Those ten available slots are super high value because that traffic that's like it's incredible amount of traffic, and um you know it, even during non nomination period it's twenty to forty thousand page views a day just by people looking for the best sports podcast or best tech podcast or you know and they come to us through Google and uh so if you've got your banner on the side, even if you don't make the nomination slate you still get some exposure there and uh, we have pretty high click through rates. Almost everyone that gets nominated number one and number two, the sponsors also get some pretty, uh, pretty significant uh, click through rates. So uh, the podcast sponsorship is $300. So if you are, and again, I've only got 10 of those. So if you want, want to be a podcaster to support, if you're a corporation and want to support, well, we've got that level too, but we haven't right. filled, you know, no one uh, wants, you know, corporations have been a little lax in coming in and helping. But um, anyway, that's what's going on. But what have you heard about the the Hall of Fame? Have you heard anything? When you talked to Dan, did you get any info? Yeah, I mean, he has a, a, a desire to keep that, keep that going and keep it alive. And it's just, um, you know, it's been a discussion um, as relates to the Evolutions event. Um, so... So, I mean, I think that there's an interest and I think there's probably going to be a path forward um, as we look to the future, right? There's a lot of question marks around podcast movement just in general right now. So it's hard for any definitive thing to get decided like, you know, concrete things, but there's still a desire to get that fired back up again. Um, so it's, it's, it's still out there on a website, but the website's a little antiquated because there hasn't been a lot going on with it the last couple of years. So um, but, we asked Dan right. to give us a budget 
and he never got us a number. Well, yeah, because it would be associated with the evolutions event, oh. and they they, they they haven't done all the planning on that yet. So, so they're going to move it. To, they're going to have the okay. They're all not right. going to do it during the normal podcast movement event then. At at this point, that wouldn't be be the case, right? That sucks. We're going to miss two years then. Yeah. I hope they allow. But I think a, a catch when up. it comes back, though, Todd. I think when, when it comes back, it, it, it's going to come back. I think as as a reconstituted Hall of Fame that's going to be a lot, lot better. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's that's my hope, and I definitely want to be supportive of it um, as far as in the podcast academy too. So, and I'm hoping that they you know do a catch-up like 10 or something instead of five and they because you know we've we've been doing five a year and right so that means we're going to be down two years worth of inductees and yeah it, it's a big deal i really I, you know i think it's important so i mean if we're going to have awards and we're going to have an industry a content industry and and i i think um you know, trying, trying to reward people with, you know, like almost like that's kind of what it is. It's kind of like a lifetime achievement type of an award is what yeah. it is really, um, is important to the industry. I mean, if we are going to have an academy like this, it's going to have, you know, a big splash of awards ceremonies to, to honor excellence in podcasting. I think this falls out of it, just like it's fallen out of, you know, um, football or basketball or Hollywood or, you know, all sorts of places have halls of fame and that's to, to recognize significant contributors to industries. So I think it's important. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm always open to something. So yeah. don't know, you know, the problem is, and the, the biggest issue has been with any awards. You look at what iHeart does. They are, you know, they basically have big enough names. Those folks don't have an issue with budget wise to come to, an event. Well, I wouldn't. I mean, Todd, I I, I would say what, what what's been happening in the world right now has really put a lot of financial pressure um, on radio. At least that's what I'm hearing. Is that um, a lot of radio stations have been really suffering? Oh, they've been decimated. Right. So iHeart may not be as strong of a of a of a company after all this. Um, it's going to take them some time to come back. But at the same time, they've done, you know, for them to throw $100,000 in awards event is like a rounding error, considering they're right. $5 billion in debt or whatever right. it is. So the question you know, then I is, is if we, if we, and what my reference was, iHeart did an event and got people, the, the people they nominated were big enough in the space that there was not an issue for them to be in LA or wherever that event was. So yeah, if we're going to yeah, have. I actually attended it. Um, Actually, Dan Dan Franks and I were at that event together. Um, yeah, I mean it was a it was a fairly small event, but it was done in the iHeart uh, Radio Theater in 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 Burbank, in down in L.A. And um, I don't know. I think with you know, we may not see that event happen this year. I don't know. It, I think it gets back to the budget that iHeart, uh, especially when you look at. Um, the podcast academy looking to have a big award ceremony in LA in, in the same time period. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just speculating right now, but um, they may still want to do something. But hey, I think it's a question mark right now. Hey, our I heart. I got a deal for you. I know how to put on award ceremonies virtually. <laughs> virtually, right. piece of cake, thirty grand. I'll right. take care of it right. for you. Right. No, no sweat. Right. And right. uh, we have a great event virtually, and uh, no problem. Uh, right, right, yeah. There you go. <laughs> but I mean, I, I don't don't take the wrong impression here. I'm not saying that iHeart shouldn't do something. They're certainly welcome to have their own awards. Yeah. And, and they did a, a amazing job with it uh, when I attended it in LA. Uh, I thought it was a professionally done but, event. But produced. Rob, you know how much money you need for a red carpet event. You need a yeah. big budget. So, yeah. you know, as you guys are planning your awards, you yeah. know, you guys are going to need a couple hundred thousand dollars to do something big. Sure, that's true. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm sure that's true. <laughs> so yeah, so that's that's something that we're going to be grappling with here as we as we look to the future here. Yeah, yeah. So that's you know that's I I know <laughs> I know you know, and it's going to be knocking on your door a little bit too about it. Well, too, that's so that's that. fine, you know. But remember, I was the guy that went to you know the first podcast awards. We had a stage that was already set up with a a lectern with a microphone and uh, a card table with trophies yeah. on it. And then I had a $49 backdrop podcast awards banner. I've got it somewhere. And uh, the budget was the cost of the trophies <laughs> and the $49 and the $49 yeah, banner, yeah. you know? Right. So, and we had 2000 people there. So, right. you know, it, it, uh, it uh, location, location, location. <laughs> And, and synchronizing events so right right yeah well, you can catch people where, where they're going to be right like at podcast right. movement evolutions or something like that if it's going to be in of course we don't know if it's going to be in la again uh i i believe it's going to be all right well we'll see but it's a possibility it won't you know that, that, that's always a possibility so well, you you could you know if um, if you think about it, where Podcast Move Evolutions was, the original Academy Awards, right, was held in the room that we had our. Is that was the exhibit area? No, it was. I think it, I think it was the exhibition area. Uh, no, it was yeah. it wasn't the exhibition area. The exhibition area was right next to it, but there was a there's a foyer with you know a uh, seating the, in the. Oh. You know what? I don't. I don't think we ever went in that room. Did we? I was in there, and and basically that had the historical stuff up there. That's the only reason uh, I knew. Okay, because they had this is where the original first four or five Academy Awards were held when you know they probably had fifty people show up. So, or whatever it yeah. was back in yeah, the I day. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go back there. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Even that that yeah. it was a kind of an interesting venue. No, it was, it was, and I've stayed there a, a few times on my trips to LA. But uh, yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I don't think it's gonna be there next time. Well, it's gonna be a new. It's gonna be more likely a new venue. All right. Well, we'll be excited to talk to Dan in July when he can talk yeah. to us more and give us more, right. more, more details, definitive stuff. Yeah. I mean, all, all, all this stuff is speculative stuff. Well, anyway, we're, I think we're out of stuff to talk about unless you get anything out. No, and I think we, we did our, our, mostly our 90 minutes. Again. Close. We're just a few minutes short, but, uh, yeah, yeah. we're, we're close enough. All right, everyone. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back on, Hey, so Rob, just as a planning standpoint, if Honolulu opens up, whatever day they open up and I'm, you know, maybe that's first of July. I don't know. But uh, I will probably be making a Honolulu run as soon as I don't have to 14 day quarantine. So I'll let you know in advance. Uh, but if I go back, I'm going to take that week off. Um, yeah. And there may be a chance that I, I can't do a show um, next Saturday, too. It's a okay. possibility. On the 20th. Yeah. All right. Well, just yeah. uh, keep me informed. I, I, I had to take a show off. Uh, well, I chose you know it's, here's something to podcasters i don't want to drag us out too much further there's some times that you know you shouldn't do a show and last thursday i was bummed out i'd lost a, a friend uh to yeah. an aviation accident i posted on facebook and i just was totally totally bummed and i just knew there was no way i was going to be able to have the energy to do the show and i just i pulled the plug on that show so um, it's okay to do that once in a while. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. So it's just, uh, the better to have a good show than a moping show. <laughs> well, it's, it's sometimes good to give your audience a break too. So, well, yeah. at my time in the space, I can do that. If you're brand new, no, but if you're, right. you've been doing a show for a while. Yes. At least that's yeah. my consulting yeah. advice. 
All right, it's Todd at Blueberry.com at Geek News on Twitter. And of course, we want you to come over to NewMediaShow.com and get subscribed, Rob. Yeah, on on Twitter, uh, at Rob Greenlee with two E's. Uh, it's a great place. Uh, the Podcast Academy also has a Twitter page now or Twitter um, handle now. It's T Podcast Academy. So at the letter T Podcast Academy. Um, and um, I, you can send an email to me if you want. Rob G at Lipson.com. Who's got the other uh, Podcast Academy? I think it's another, I think it's a company out of Australia that has it. Oh, really? Are they using it? Oh, yeah. It looks like they, no. You should go after that. They haven't used that since 2016. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you got to do a reach out. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on the new mini show. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.